Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to go on an adventure in this new version of Space Engine, and we're going to discover a star that has a person's name. A person who actually discovered it a long time ago, and there aren't that many stars that are named after people. Today we're going to be talking about Innis star. Welcome to What The Math. So we are actually are not there yet, this is just a random uh, gas giant that has absolutely gorgeous purple rings around it and I just wanted to show you what the new space engine is capable of. And by the way, if you still haven't really considered supporting uh, the guy who's making Space Engine all by himself, do check out his website at spaceengine.org. He actually has been making this simulation for something like several years now, close to a decade actually, and he basically survives on donations, which is absolutely insane. I don't know how he does it. Anyway, totally just wanted to pitch this there. Today we're talking about Innistar. Innistar star is also known as Gliese 422, and it's located about 42 light years away from planet Earth. We're going to start at planet Earth, and I wanted to show you that you kind of can't really see it very well if you just go to Earth. Um, as a matter of fact, the uh, star itself is very dim. It's, it's, um, it's a red dwarf. It's a Type M 3.5 uh, star. It was actually found back in 1920 by a guy whose name is Robert Innes. And so today, unofficially, or more or less almost officially, we call this star Innes star. As you can see, even if I zoom in, it's almost impossible to see it. It's uh, very, very difficult to see. When we just discovered it though, because of its uh, relatively high um, uh, the speed across the sky, also known as lateral velocity, um, we actually thought that this was much closer to planet Earth than it really is. So let's actually go check it out. Let's jump to it and you'll see uh, that it's actually a typical star. Now, it's only about 1% the brightness of our sun. So this is not very realistic. It's, it's very dim actually. And uh, at the same time, because it's so dim, it's, this is a lot more realistic now. It doesn't produce much light, but it does produce a lot of infrared radiation and other radiation that actually uh, warms up its planet that's right there. As a matter of fact, we discovered this planet back in 2014, and it turns out that it's also in the habitable zone of this star. In other words, it's in the location where you would expect it to have liquid water or potentially life. But it just so happens that this planet known as Gliese 422b, unofficially known as Enus b, is actually a uh, what's known as a super earth it's about 10 masses of earth and it's very 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 likely to be some sort of a gas giant let's check it out though so here we go this is what Innis planet looks like now it's obviously illuminated but by the stars so it's a little bit difficult to see the surface so we're going to make it a little bit more visible now even though here it's actually known as cool desertic super aquaria meaning that it's basically a, a desert planet with potentially some liquid on, on the surface and even though the temperature here seems to be minus 76 degrees celsius it's more likely that it's actually a lot hotter so in the simulation as you can see it has ice on the surface this white patch you see right here is actually ice water ice but uh it's more likely that this is actually some sort of a um, very very large very massive um giant a gas giant like planet or more like a gas dwarf planet because its mass is at the point where you would expect it to, to turn uh more gas like not really terrestrial like now these unusual tracks that you see are most likely from some sort of a unusual collision that it incurred a long time ago what is really cool about this particular simulation or this version of the planet is that if you actually look at uh, the surface here, first of all, it has a tremendously thick atmosphere of about, uh, I think it says 700 atmospheres, but also its atmosphere contains a lot of nitrogen in the simulation at least. Uh, nitrogen is really important for uh, potentially having life on the surface, but also there's CO2, which is also important. If you have nitrogen and CO2, 
you are very likely going to be able to create atmosphere uh, needed for plants. But obviously the temperature here is very low, it's minus 70 degrees Celsius, so it's kind of like Antarctica. On the other hand, what is interesting about uh, this version of the planet is that we actually uh, have very, very, very high gravity here. It's about double the gravity on the surface of planet Earth, meaning that if you were to land uh, using a spacecraft, you would have almost no way to escape using uh, chemical engines. As a matter of fact, because of the way that chemical engines work, basically rocket engines that we use today, they would just not have enough power to propel the rocket outside, so you'd be stuck here forever. Unless you have some sort of a nuclear power engine, which might be able to provide it more power. Now, what else do we actually know in terms of facts about the system? Well, we know that because this object is in the habitable area of the star, there is a slight chance that it might actually have liquid water here in a twilight area, basically on the border between the light area and the dark area. But we also think that because this is a red dwarf and because this planet is relatively close to it, as a matter of fact, there is the star right there, um, it's possible that uh, this is probably tidally locked, meaning that this is always facing the star and the dark side is always dark. Uh, this particular planet, I believe, orbits every 26 days, so a single orbit here is about 26 days, and uh, it's about 0.1 astronomical units away, or basically 10 or 11 percent the distance of Earth from the Sun. And because it's much larger, and because it's much more massive than Earth, uh, it's kind of hard to predict what actually is on the surface of this planet, unless we actually study in a little bit more detail. And with the telescopes that are coming out in the next few years, specifically James Webb Telescope, we might be able to discover what's actually happening here. At the same time, there's a very, very big chance that there's actually more planets uh, orbiting around the star. And it's possible that we might even discover some really cool atmospheric uh, phenomenon around this planet that we didn't really know existed anywhere else, because this is just a very unusual planet to find compared to other planets we discovered around red dwarfs. We don't normally find mega-Earths or orbiting around the red dwarfs. In other words, most of the planets we discovered around red dwarfs are usually not as massive as this. As a matter of fact, they're a lot more Earth-like. So this is a little bit more massive than we're used to. So for all we know, this is actually a very interesting and very unusual object. And it's quite possible that we might even discover some really interesting atmosphere and possibly even liquid water here, because like I said, it is in the habitable zone of the star. Now, except for this, we don't really know much else about the system, but we definitely need to study it a little bit more, because its proximity and the fact that it has an actual object in the habitable zone makes it very, very interesting and very important. Uh, and the guy who discovered the star, Robert Innes, he's also uh, famous for discovering Proxima Centauri, the closest star to our solar system, and another star that has a very unusual Earth-like planet orbiting in its habitable zone. So, in that sense, he's actually a pretty cool person. Although, he's not around anymore. Anyway, that's all we know about Inner Star, also known as Gliese 422. This system is located in constellation Carina, so if you do have a telescope that's powerful enough, you might even be able to see it. But, unfortunately, I live in an area where light pollution is too strong, so I'm never going to be able to see it with a telescope. Other than that, that's all I wanted to say in this video, and hopefully now you know a little bit more about this unusual star. Oh, and by the way, it's also known as LHS-40. So yes, it does have quite a few names. Anyway, see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.